Hello everyone, my name is Dead to Me, and today I'm bringing you episode 5 of my inflation RPG walkthrough. I'm super excited to move on from the money grinding portion of the game into all the fun stuff this game has to offer, so let's not waste any time and let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is the next few maps, and then I'll move on to some more tips, as well as talk about the two runs featured in this video. In between the maze map and the grid, there is a linear map with very few zones. The level here goes up kind of quickly, making this place kind of difficult, especially in hard mode. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a decent map to feature, however the map is small and impossible to get lost in. The boss to this map is the Black Equilibrium, which drops the battle point rings plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. So it's beneficial to kill him with luck boosting equipment. The next map is featured here, and it's the grid. This map is very unique, and the bonuses here appear in a Sudoku type fashion. The map I've provided shows the optimal route for checking each bonus in this map. There is a total of 7 possible unique zones which bonuses will differentiate, marked on my map with A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. The grid's other unique aspect is the exclamation point question mark bonus, which can only spawn on this map. This bonus takes you to the secret crystal map. The boss in the grid is right in the middle. He's not too strong compared to the monsters here, and he can also drop the battle point rings plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. He will take you to the heaven map. One thing to note is that if you kill the boss on the grid, you won't be able to access the crystal map on that run. And, if you go to the crystal map, you will be sent to heaven after, so you won't be able to kill the boss on the grid on that run. You will pick your path each time based on which items you need more, either the stat gems or the battle point rings. Moving on to the crystal map, this map is very simple. It features 6 bosses, 5 of which are color coded for their specific stat gem. And the boss in the middle is the rainbow crystal. Each boss here gives you one battle point, and the rainbow crystal will give you three. The dark blue crystal at the bottom of the map can drop HP gems plus four and plus five. The red crystal at the right can drop the attack gems plus four and plus five. The light blue crystal at the top right can drop the agility gems plus four and plus five. The yellow crystal at the top left can drop the luck gems plus four and plus five and the green crystal at the left can drop the defense gems plus 4 and plus 5. Finally, the rainbow crystal in the middle can drop a play gem plus 1 and plus 2, as well as the hero gem, which is extremely beneficial because it increases all stats by 30,000 when worn. And that's it for the crystal map, so let's move on into heaven. This map is confusing at first, but you'll understand the layout soon enough. There are 5 bosses in this map, and they're in the 50,000 zone, the 58,000 zone, the 67,000 zone, the 75,000 zone, and finally, the 93,333 zone. These bosses are considered the gods, and will drop the four gods weapon and armor. When you spawn in heaven, you'll be at the bottom area in the middle. Be cautious, because this map is the quickest for scaling levels so far, and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but head around the ice structures and head north and to move through the map. My method here is to grind XP in this middle area until I can confidently kill the enemies in the 79,000 zone or higher. Then, I'll go back and kill all the bosses up until the one in the 75,000 zone. The bosses here are branched off the areas in the middle as you can see and they go in a pattern of right, left, right. There are a few items that can be found in heaven so I'll touch on these and then we'll talk about the boss drops. The first thing that can be found here is in the 43,000 zone. It's the crystal cape, and it has decent stats for early game armor at 8,000 defense, and it has a 290% defense bonus. This item is not required for a 100,000 level run. The next item that can be found here, which is dropped by the woman knight in the 44,444 zone or the 45,200 zone, is the s stock plus 1. This late game weapon is almost a necessity for a 100,000 run, and it has 0 base attack with a 380% bonus to attack. The next item that will drop in heaven is the crystal hammer. This is a very good early game weapon that trumps the samurai longsword. It has 20,000 base attack and a 290% attack bonus. This is dropped by Thor in the 47,500 zone, and is not needed for your 100,000 level run. 
And the final item that you can find in heaven, excluding the bosses, is the Crystal Lance. This item is dropped in the 93,333 zone by the Crystal Warrior, and if you can kill the enemy that drops it, then it's already useless. It gives a base attack of 10,000 and an attack bonus of 360%. I do not recommend wasting time getting this item. Moving on to the bosses, I'll start with the weakest. The bosses are shown on this map, however, they are standalone pictures of each boss and they blend in a little bit to the map. First, the farthest to the bottom right in the 50,000 zone is Suzaku. He can drop the Four Gods Red Lance. This weapon is better than the s stock as a late game weapon, but not by much, and it's definitely not required for a 100,000 level run. It gives you the same 380% damage increase, but instead gives you a 25,000 base attack as well. The next boss is named Biako, and it's located in the 58,000 zone. It's the boss farthest to the bottom left of the map. This boss can drop the Four Gods Green Armor. However, this armor can also be dropped by the Green Dragon enemy in the same zone as the boss. This armor is not needed to make it to hard mode, however it is super useful to have going into hard mode. This armor gives a base defense of 12,000 as well as a 350% boost to defense. The next boss is in the middle to the right and it's in the 67,000 zone. The boss's name is Siryu and it drops the Four Gods Blue Sword. This sword is very beneficial, however, if you can kill this boss, you're likely to already have unlocked hard mode. Regardless, this very powerful sword trumps the s Doc plus one as a late game weapon by a long shot. It has a base attack of 100 and an attack bonus of 420%. The next boss is named Genbu, and he's at the top left of this map in the 75,000 zone. He can drop the four gods yellow armor, this armor is beast. If you can get this armor as a drop before hard mode, you'll be set up with your early game armor for a long time. This wicked armor gives a base defense of 75,000, which is absolutely phenomenal, and on top it will give you a 240% defense bonus. And last but not least, this boss will be impossible to kill for a long time, but I'll feature him today anyway. This boss is located in the 93,333 zone, and his name is Koryu. He is very, very strong compared to his zone level, so don't use the actual level of his zone as a guide. I would suggest instead being level 150,000 plus your first time fighting him. He drops the Four Gods Gem, which is very beneficial as it has 90,000 base attack, defense, and agility. This gem is sought out for usually when people come back to normal mode after getting stuck in hard mode. This gem is usually sought out for when people come back to normal mode after getting stuck in hard mode. And that's it for the bosses here. If you kill Koryu, the boss in the 93,333 zone, you will be transported to the highway to hell. But we won't have use for that map for a long time yet, so let's move on from the maps into some things you need to know for this transitional stage to hard mode. From this point on, Money will have almost no effect to your game, except for unlocking all of your accessory slots, unlocking all of your set switches, and the last thing you can use money for, and likely the most important, is using HP renewal during battle. If you're fighting a tough battle and you see things starting to go sour, if you think you'll be able to survive from that point on with full HP, then tap the screen and tap the HP renewal. If you have enough gold, your HP will be renewed to 100%. A couple things to note is that the HP renewal is rather expensive, and so you'll only get a couple chances to use it per run. This means you should save your money until you are sure to die without the heal, so that you waste as little as possible. And the other thing to note about this function is that when you tap it, the monster will get one last attack out on you before you heal, so be careful if your HP is getting dangerously low, because you may waste the money and then still die. Another awesome part about this transitional stage that might be beneficial to look into is the exclamation point and triple exclamation point zones. You now have access to most of the normal mode weapons and armors, so if you decide to collect 19 of the first 33 weapons, or 12 of the first 15 armors, you can now access the triple exclamation point zone, the black bonus area. This area has a few bonuses that are noteworthy. The Durandel, 
the Cursed Axe is the only decent weapon here, but it's early game and is trumped by the Tomahawk, so it's not worth focusing on. It has a base attack of 16,000 and an attack bonus of 350%. The black bonus area can also drop the Cursed Armor, which isn't the greatest, but it can possibly be used in attempt at a 100,000 run. Still, the rare armor and the light armor both trumpet and are likely easier to get. This armor has a base defense of 2000 and a defense bonus of 300%. And the last thing that can be dropped in the black bonus area is all of the plus 4 stat gems. So if you're having no luck at the crystal bosses, you can utilize the triple exclamation point zones to get those plus 4 gems out of the way. Do note that they do not drop the plus 5 versions of these gems. Those would have to be obtained by the crystal bosses or the elemental bosses in hard mode. Moving on to the white bonus area, there is much more substantial drops here. This area can be accessed by the exclamation point zone and in order to enter you must obtain 37 normal mode weapons. The drops that you can find here include the Swan Chica, which is an early game weapon that's decent with a 24,000 base attack but a measly 160% attack bonus. And another weapon you can find here is the Holy Lance. It's a small bit better than the S stock plus one, but not by much, so whichever you get first will suffice for a 100,000 run. It has a base attack of 3,000 and an attack bonus of 380%. The next item that can be received here is the Holy Armor. Being a major competitor to the light armor, this mid to end game armor will trump the rare armor. It has a base defense of 5,000 and a defense bonus of 330%. And finally, the most important item you can receive here is the stat point crystal. This crystal is one of the strongest accessories in the game and it's recommended that if you get one, that you wear it at all times. Because for every level that you get while it's equipped, you will receive one extra stat point. This can stack with more than one and once you reach the exclamation point zone in hard mode, the stat point crystal plus one can be dropped there, and it will give you two extra stat points per level. These may not seem like much, but it adds up especially when you're getting levels of 100,000 or more. Now, when grinding specific items, you'll want to avoid some bosses if you want to efficiently grind them. One example is when I grind for XP gems on Arachi. I can skip the Sphinx boss, the Dragon Rider boss, and all of the elemental bosses, as ideally I know I'll be able to kill him with my base gear stats by the time I'm grinding him, so all my stat points will go to luck. Eventually, the more you play, you'll develop your own systems like this, and I'll also have some examples in future videos. Moving on, I'd like to talk about potential minimum setup for a 100,000 level run. First off, you'll want either the s stock plus one or the Holy Lance for an endgame weapon but I think it would be possible with the original S-Stock with some luck or strong armor and accessories. As for armor, I would suggest a minimum of the rare armor for late game, and the light armor would definitely help. You could possibly pull it off with the cursed armor, but only under the right circumstances. Now, let's talk about accessories. I would suggest using at least two to three setups to save time from switching equipment. Setup one will be an EXP based setup and will be used in most battles. You'll want to equip at least 4 to 5 EXP gems, and at this point you should have 3 XP gems plus 2, so equip those, and at least 1, but possibly an extra EXP plus 1 gem. And next, you'll want your recovery necklace. The small recovery necklace may possibly do with the best gear, however it is highly recommended that you get the original recover necklace before attempting your 100,000 level run. As for the last two slots, if you have them open, they can be filled with anything you see as beneficial. I usually like to keep my stat gems or my rate rings here in these slots, but they can be used in a number of different ways. If you don't have all the slots unlocked, you may have to make up for it by unequipping one of your EXP gems late in your run for a stat gem or something of the sort. Your second setup is very basic, and it will be used in between battles to get around. You'll want your proper stat boosting gems as well as your recovery necklace. And then you'll want 3 encounter plus rings and as many movement plus 1 gems as you can fit. This will help you get around encountering as little battles as possible. The final setup is optional and it's the luck setup. Basically you want to keep everything the same as the XP setup, but instead of the EXP gems, replace them with your highest level luck gems. 
With these three setups and a little bit of luck, you should be able to skirt skirt past that 100,000 level finish line. Now I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but once you're in hard mode, you're likely to have to come back to normal mode to farm some of the items, as hard mode is substantially harder. Some items you may need to come back for are your plus 5 stat gems, the hero gem, the 4 gods gem, the battle point rings plus 2 and 3, as well as at least 1 stat point crystal. Now you probably won't get all the plus 5 gems, the hero gem or the 4 gods gem, but the others on that list are good to shoot for and they may give you the boost for hard mode that you're looking for. Now, let's move on into the final bit of this video explaining what happened in the runs I featured in this video. During the first run, I accomplished quite a lot. I found out that I could kill the Sphinx on my first battle and quickly moved through the first several bosses up until Orochi when I started having to grind. In this run, I got a few useful drops to note. Near the beginning of this run, I got lucky with a revival necklace. And if you don't know what that does, it basically gives you a tiny chance to be revived on a fatal hit. This can be useful on hard boss battles. The next thing I got right after was the Wind Sword plus one, which I ended up using until I got a hold of an S stock. I received my S stock in the maze and used it to carry on. I killed the maze dragons in an attempt at their weapons or armor, with no luck unfortunately. And then I moved on to get a base level from the Yellow Equilibrium, and then see how far I could get. I killed the yellow equilibrium, and during the path to the black equilibrium, I came across a triple question mark zone, which rewarded me with a hard armor. I used this as an early game armor in my next run. With all that, I died soon after, and my base level at this point is 4. And finally, during that run, I unlocked accessory slot 7, which will help me in my future endeavors. Moving on into my second run, I started out strong, and surprisingly, I got another revival necklace. I also received a thunder sword from an enemy in the zone where the thunder boss is located. Though it is not beneficial to my gear, it puts me a step closer to unlocking the white bonus area. I then farm for the rare armor and I get really lucky, receiving it fairly quickly and with many battle points to spare. Throughout the rest of this run, I got no other significant drops, however I unlocked the third setup slot for my gear, and I pushed far enough to kill the black equilibrium as well as the boss in the middle of the grid, granting me two more base levels for a total of six. This all sets me up to go for the S stock plus one, and hopefully I will come across a recover necklace soon, and then I would be ready for my 100,000 level run. And the last thing I'll mention is some short term goals for this account. First, I'd like to get to hard mode and also get a recovery necklace, but I'd also like to try and kill some of the bosses in heaven, as well as try my luck on some of the stat gems. I can say a couple of plus 4 or plus 5 luck gems is a good goal, as well as maybe a plus 5 attack or defense gem. And my final goal is the stat point crystal. I'll likely grind out a bunch of weapons in one run and get the requirement for the white bonus area, and then casually try my luck whenever I see an exclamation point zone. Other than that, i just like to say sorry for the late upload. I only get Wi-Fi every few days and it took me longer than expected to make and edit this video. If you did enjoy this video or found it informative, feel free to give it a like. It helps my videos get out there. And if you're looking forward to these videos when they come out, you can be notified when they come out by subscribing to my channel. And I'd just like to say I'm super excited to get into hard mode. This is when the game really starts picking up and getting more challenging, so it's going to be really fun stuff to talk about. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you really enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for part 6 of my inflation RPG walkthrough.